there's there's latency. Yeah. So, like what like right so like right now we're soft uh -huh. and I'm like around the monitor or whatever. Yeah. And then I I kind of pull and there's a delay getting so then you think you haven't gotten there so you keep pulling so then it pull past it, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of it's interesting. What is up folks, today we have something special for you. We are actually going to be testing out the new Axune Cinei Pro Mark II. And with me, I have one of my very good friends from the Detroit days. Yeah. And uh, this is Shallowby Omar. This guy is no joke. This is his Instagram. You should check him out. As we're talking here, you're looking at his IMDB credits. Omar, tell us about some of the cool guest star roles uh, of some TV spots you've been on. My first ever one was called Doubt. Man, I was super excited. Um, it, was, it, was, it was quite amazing. My favorite one was um, Faith Under Fire. You know, I just felt like a big star because they flew me out to Pittsburgh first class and, and gave me a hotel room and I got to work with Tony Braxton. Yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. Tony Braxton. And uh, one of my favorites that we watched you in was when you were on Speechless for a few episodes, oh, too. Oh, yeah. I worked the whole week on that one. That was cool. Yeah, that yeah, was really you had a cool. Big, you had a pretty big part in that one. Yeah, I was in half the episode. Yeah, that was yeah, killer, yeah. dude. I'm going to let you guys check him out. I, I definitely want you guys to give him a follow on Instagram if, if Instagram is your thing. But today, he is helping us out, acting in a little, just a little dramatic piece. But I wanted to do something with the dolly, and I brought in a professional Thomas Hennessy to pull focus for us and really test out how good these new wireless transmitters from Axoon really are. So let's roll it. Here we go. And ready, Thomas? Yeah. Okay, and I'll lean in. And Omar. Okay, so we just got done doing a little test with the new Action Cine Eye Pro 2, Mark II. I have here Thomas Hennessy. He is a professional first AC, pulls focus for a living as well as he has a director of photography. He actually is the DP of the documentary that I was the B-cam operator on that you saw a few weeks back when we were talking about the C500 Mark II. So Thomas, how long have you been working in the industry? Well, so I started out, like you, as an actor in uh, 2006. And then I went to film school and graduated film school in 2014 and made a shift to working behind the camera. Nice. At that point, yeah. He's pulled uh, focus on some, some pretty big productions, yeah, Thomas? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's not as, like, nothing like Dunkirk or something, you yeah, know, like sure, anything, sure. but uh, a lot of, like, uh, a lot of those, like, lifetime Christmas movie type sure. stuff, so TV movie stuff. So bigger than the DIY, like, no budget kind of stuff, but, yeah, uh, you the know, dog it's, time it's, style. It's, it's kind of that middle grade. Uh, so we had a super DIY setup for this job. Yes. And uh, we had the uh, Axune Cinei Pro Mark II and the Tilta Nucleus Nano, and then our budget monitor here, the Port Keys LH5H. So what was your experience with all three of these devices? At the end of the day, as, as you'll be able to see with, with the shot, we got the shot. Okay. So at the end of the day, I, if the tool is there to allow you to get the shot, it got the job done. But there were definitely some things that made it more difficult to get the shot. Mm. Uh, namely, there's a little bit of latency coming from the, the wireless transmitter and receiver. And so when you're starting your dolly move, and I don't know, maybe, maybe you'll see it when we go through the footage, maybe you won't, I don't, I don't know how extreme it is, but I felt like I'm, you're starting to push and I'm not, and because we stuck me in a room where I'm not seeing the camera, I don't see that you started to push until a little bit later. And so then I'm already behind and I'm trying to catch up. So you may see in some of those early takes where it like kind of darts in and out. And then I think once it got, once I get on it, I think I'm just ahead of it basically uh, all the way in, in, into the end. But uh, the latency definitely made it not the most ideal tool for mm. pulling focus. Mm -hmm. uh, be great for Video Village, but it's a, it'll be a challenge to, for uh, focus pullers. 
Got you. And I purposely put Thomas in a room by himself because I know he's so dang good because uh, he worked with us on the little passion project that we just did uh, where I shot only with those three Godox S30 lights. And he was pulling focus with his professional setup, his bigger monitor, his uh, a, a more higher end uh, follow focus. So I know that he just likes to watch the camera a lot of times. Uh, so I purposely wanted to put him in there to see how he could work off of the Axune Cine I Pro 2. You had mentioned that you were staying ahead of it. So what is that? How does that work? I mean, so I think what's happening is I'm basically in a, it's almost subconscious. I'm compensating for the latency. Got you. I'm not, I guess I'm not ahead of it. I'm ahead of what I'm seeing on the uh, monitor. Okay. okay. Uh, because yeah. I know we're, you know, and then I don't know if that makes sense or not. Yeah, but like, totally. Uh, it, it's just like, I know that like the picture is, is a, is a, and I don't even know exactly what the delay is, but it's enough delay that like it's noticeable. At that point, I almost like stop looking at the monitor mm -hmm. and just kind of going, getting in the, the rhythm with yeah. you and kind of, you know, seeing where, where we're going with it. And sure. like I said, I came out then and we did a take without the monitor at all. Yeah. I thought that was easier. Than... Yeah, so let's talk about that experience because there was, so here you'll see where Thomas was like, just wanted to try it out without using the monitor and just watching from behind the dolly. So just compare your experiences between those two uh, situations. So it was, e it was easier to not use the monitor. Yeah. Because I could just focus on the camera and, and, and see where the camera was moving and see it in real time. Yeah. With the monitor, because the, of the delay, yeah. it was like, where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? What am I doing? And you start, you know, your your attention gets split and yeah, and so on. So I guess I guess so. I guess my question is, where do you think the delay is coming from? Is it something from the tilt the nucleus nano? No, no, is it the, the delay, axiom? The delay is with the axiom. It's from the it's axiom. It's the axiom, and it's it's a small delay. So it's not a delay that like obviously like for a director or hair and makeup or somebody else watching it, it's perfect. Like Video Village, fine. Great, because they see the picture, they see the frame. Yeah. And I think for probably eighty percent. Even pulling focus, it's probably fine. Yeah. It's the only time that I think you'd it really becomes an issue is like obviously like on a push in or even more would be like to where the camera's moving on where there's a two axis move. So maybe the camera's pushing in on an actor that's walking. Yeah. Like what we did, we kind of did that shot with Scott coming in uh, the other, you know where it's like the camera's moving and he's moving and yeah. and that little bit of delay will put you so far behind yeah. uh, the that you have to you need just need something with a little more. Zero latency. Got you, got you. And then we tested out the audio because the Axiom Cine I Pro Mark II also transmits audio. So what what was the experience with that one? It felt like it was almost a full second behind. Yeah. Well, some nice books over here. And look at the ukuleles. Keep talking to me. Keep talking to you. Hey, Justin. I came all the way from downtown LA to come to Glendale. I think we got it. Have a nice place. I don't even think that would work for somebody just trying to like listen to the dialogue if you can actually hear the people talking. Yeah. And also the audio was further delayed than the image. So when we, we set up the test uh, with your actor and we, he would talk, you could see his lips move before you would hear the, hear the audio. So yeah. Uh, so in a scenario like that, you would not want that because like you said, if your cue to pull or rack was solely based on the audio, this, you would be screwed. Yeah, you would be a, like a second behind. Yeah. You know, and then maybe you could get away, depending on what the shot was and how much wiggle room there is. I mean, yeah. maybe you can get away with something like that. Yeah. But I mean, it's better than nothing. Sure. You know, if you're doing something like, say you're doing a scene where the actors are in a car yeah. and like they got the door shut, yeah. they're mic'd up and you're out there and you can't hear them and you have to maybe, you know, you're on like a side kind of profile shot, you know, where you're on the guy and the, the driver and then like she turns and you're gonna, ra or, or you're racking on their dialogue, you would probably you would be behind something. it. You'd, be, you'd have it and you could try to make it work and you could try to anticipate if you, sure. cause you know, you would, something like that, you'd like maybe have the, the script in front of you and you know the line. So yeah. you would just have to be ahead of it because what you're hearing is, is behind. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, but it was pretty brutal. Like, like if I was a director and was, you know, sitting in Video Village like they do with the headphones on, I don't think I would be too hip on doing that. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's visually out of sync. Yeah, It'd be exactly. one thing if it was the delay was in sync with the video, then you're, you're just, you know, but it was, yeah. you could see the lips moving. Yeah. And then you hear it. So is that a monitor thing or is that a, is no, that a no, I think it's all that's because it's all coming from the, from the axiom. So my best guess would be that it's just, that's coming from, it's all from, from the that. Axiom. The monitor is just interpreting the information that, yeah. that you're putting into it. How is these, the size of these new axioms compared to what you're used to working so, with? So, I mean, they're, that's, they're, 
they're about the same size as it like is. a Teradex system okay. or something. They're may, maybe a little bit bigger. These antennas, I don't know if the, you can replace these with Smaller some little stuff or some better antennas, um, which I might do if I own something like that. Because they're a little, just so huge. But, um, I mean, it's fine. It's fine size-wise. It's interesting that they use the, the Sony batteries, uh, mm. which actually is, would be kind of nice for if you're doing like a, a handheld focus thing, like uh, like say you're doing like a gimbal or a steady cam shot and you've got to kind of move with the, the camera operator. Or this is kind of nice because you could run this in a, in a small monitor, both off like a Sony battery and just mm. keep it light. And so you could run around with a steady cam op or a gimbal operator and, and kind of keep it going. So That's a good I note. do kind of like that you can power this with the Sony battery. That cool. is that is a cool kind of feature. Yeah, those are just the Sony NPF L series batteries. So yeah. it's six hundred dollars for the Action Cinei Pro Mark II. Now, what would you, would you recommend that for the, at that price point? Or so, I will say you're a better expert on like what else exists in that price point. To me, the the Teradek, I think it's called the Teradek Ace now. Teradek and and Paralinks are both owned by Viacom, and they're kind of merging it all under the Teradek thing now. So they used to have a Paralinks Ace which was kind of their budget single channel transmitter receiver. Right, so they have a Teradek Ace. I think it costs a thousand dollars. Is that HDMI only? You like can, this is yes. HDMI only. So there is, a t I think there's one with HDMI and I think there's for a little bit more, you, you can get SDI. Gotcha. I think for price wise right now, what I don't know, Vaxxis has, Vaxxis is on the come up and Vaxxis have been getting a lot of cool new products mm -hmm. too for or, you know lower budge guys like myself. But uh, until I've seen those units, right now I still think the Hollyland Mars 400S is a viable option if you get both HDMI and SDI. Mm -hmm. Now it does have a little bit of a latency issue when we saw it compared to some of the lower end mm -hmm. monitor uh, transmitters, but right. um, to me I think that's the selling point, it has SDI. Does this give you an option to uh, like set up its own Wi-Fi network and have people that can monitor on an iPad as well? It can, yeah. So that's nice, especially on set now where you know you don't want everybody gathering around the same monitor. They if can you can all have their up. own device. So I mean, I, and honestly like, this, I mean, we weren't, I wasn't super far away, but I was down the hall in another room and the signal quality was fine. Yeah. So, I mean, so for the price, like this is kind of uncharted territory. I mean, it wasn't, but a few years ago, you couldn't get anything at that price point. So the technology is definitely advancing. I think for $600, it's, it's a good value. Okay. Cool. I think we'll end it there, folks. I'm going to leave links to both Thomas and uh, Shalaby's Instagrams down in the description below. I highly recommend you check them out. Uh, our friend Shalaby Omar is no joke as well. So thank you to both of these guys for volunteering their time to me. And we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Yeah. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. Wanna talk that talk in reality, you have not seen me in action You think the come up comes overnight, you ain't behind the scenes Trust me, these things don't just happen No shade to Gerald, but G's don't come easy When you try to eat, I produce it and rapping. I read that contract you sent me to sign But excuse me, I can't help myself, I'm just laughing Hey, you try to cut out a piece of my pie And I ask you politely, what's it that you offer me, yeah I produce all my own beats and I have no intention of losing my publisher, yeah Independent individual <laughs>